Hello this is D and I'm back with another video. It's been quite some time since I last uploaded a video on PC hardware or gaming. Now in 2018 I will once again start covering PC news and of course gaming. Now for those of you that follow the channel you know that I got a Vega 64 shortly after launch for MSRP. Now Vega is good but it gets quite hot and after a certain degree will start to throttle. Not only does it get hot but the reference models get quite loud too while attempting to keep the temperatures low. Now I had enough of my living room sounding like an airport runway and pulled the trigger on the EK water blocks all in one a 240R liquid cooling kit. Now this kit retails for just 239 US dollars which is extremely cheap for a custom liquid loop. Now there is only one caveat actually two and the first being that it is an aluminum water block which means you can't mix other metals in the liquid cooling system and this is to avoid galvanic corrosion. Second is that it only has one 240 millimeter radiator. Now this kit cools the GPU and CPU but can one 240 millimeter radiator keep the system cool. Now I'm going to do some mining and gaming benchmarks to see if this kit can deliver low temperatures but first let's unbox this kit. unboxing is done, let's take apart my Vega 64 and prepare it for the EK water block. I thought I recorded when I applied the thermal pads and paste and I can confirm that enough thermal pads were included and the paste was applied in an X pattern on the GPU and little X's on the HBM2 memory.
Now we're going to skip forward to the build being completed and I gotta say there was enough tubes included in the kit and it was easy to cut. All in all it was a smooth process so let's move on to the benchmarks. I do some ethereum mining and my temps and noise were quite high before. Roughly about 67 degrees celsius and I was getting about 43 mega hashes on ethereum mining. Now after the water block was installed I got 45 degrees celsius with virtually no sound from the fans and 45 to 46 mega hashes a second for ethereum mining. Now here are my settings so you guys can try them out and hopefully you will get the same if you have a liquid cooling setup. Now 1140 on the HBM is great but I gotta say that it is a pretty high overclock so some of you won't be able to reach the same. Now this is a huge increase in performance and equally huge decrease in heat and acoustics. Now most of you want to know how it performs in gaming and I have to say the performance increase is also huge. I was able to get a score of 18,100 114 which is a really good score now my temperatures on average were lower than 50 degrees celsius but at one time it did spike to 52 degrees celsius but on the average it was about 45 degrees celsius now my cpu was also cool under load and it was roughly 43 degrees celsius and this is exceptional now i have my cpu clocked to 3.8 gigahertz with 1.27 volts and i can go to 4 gigahertz but it requires more power and of course the cpu will get hotter now I get around 50 degrees celsius and it is a good score but 3.8 is good for what I do. Now sometimes for gaming I do go up to 4 gigahertz but on a day to day basis 3.8 does the job. I gotta say this kit is exceeding my expectations seeing how it has only one radiator. Next I tested superposition at 4k and I got a score of 6850 but at 58 degrees celsius. Now by any means this is not a bad score or bad temperatures but I know that I can go lower. So I undervolted and tweaked the clock slightly and got a score of 6816 but with the max temperatures of 46 degrees celsius. Now I wanted to see where my superposition score compared to other users out there so I went to their website to compare my benchmarks to others. Now when I was looking at it I couldn't believe that I was so far below the top but then I noticed that that was actually the Titan V which is a monster GPU and also cost $3,000. Now when I typed in RX Vega and checked the benchmarks I was able to see that I was actually in the top five cards that were tested. Now there's a score that is slightly above mine at 7057 and there's a score that is below it 6000 736 and of course my scores of 6850 and 6816 are above that which would put me in the top five of all vega cards tested not bad at all and i gotta say i am really satisfied with these results now if you have a reference vega card i highly recommend this kit not only will your temperatures be lower but you will rid yourself of the loud sounds from the reference blowers now i see that amd liquid cards go to about 60 degrees celsius so this kit runs even cooler than what AMD is offering underwater. Now I gotta say this kit is wonderful. It not only cools your GPU but your CPU and at really low temperatures. There's nothing more that I can say. The benchmarks speak for themselves. If you have a reference 56 or a reference 64 Vega card, what are you waiting for? Go out and order this kit. Now I want to know if you guys have an AMD liquid cooled card, what are your clock speeds, what are your temperatures underwater, and also if you have an aftermarket card, I'd like to know what your clock speeds are and what your temperatures are as well. Now please leave your comments down below and also if you have any questions on how to build this kit or if you're building it and you come across this video, you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And like I usually say, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.